Welcome to Module 8 of RatRaceRebellion.com's free online course about how to find legitimate work-from-home jobs and gigs. I'm Chris Durst, co-founder of Rat Race Rebellion, and if you've watched the previous modules in this course, you should probably be feeling pretty well equipped, very knowledgeable, and have lots of techniques for finding your ideal work-from-home job. Now we take it to the next step getting your information, your resume into the hands of a decision maker. That used to be a lot easier back in the day when you could hand your resume physically on paper to somebody who was going to be interviewing you and making a decision. Now there are added layers and those layers can make things more complex, but as long as you know how to handle them, you should be in great shape. And that's what we're going to be doing in this module. We're going to be talking about building an effective resume, one that's going to get you past the bots, the applicant tracking software, and into the hands of a human decision maker. As we've discussed in previous modules, applicant tracking software is used by companies as a means of, first of all, posting their job descriptions and putting out a call for candidates, but then it's used for gathering the data, gathering resumes and information about the candidates. So when you go to um, apply for a job and you're applying online, a lot of times the information that you're entering is first going through the applicant tracking software. It's not going directly to the inbox of a human resources manager or hiring manager. And the applicant tracking software does a lot of things with it before it ever sends that information along to an actual human being who can make some decisions. Let's talk about that a little bit before we dive into um, building the resume because it's going to be critically important as to the format that you decide to use. So as I've mentioned previously, about 75% of all applications or resumes never make it into the hands of a human resources manager. The bots or making a decision right up front as to who is and who is not a viable candidate. So it's critically important that when you're putting your resume together, that it be something that the bots are going to look at and say, yeah, this person looks amazing. Let's go ahead and get that over to the human resources manager. Most applicant tracking software is set up to scan and score and rank resumes and pass only the very best candidates along to a human resources manager. And unfortunately, what can happen is if your resume is not highly legible, if it's not well laid out, if it's not hitting the high marks, you're never going to get into the hands of an HR manager. And you can see from what I've put here on this slide, um, basically it's going to parse the information, it's going to analyze the data because to a bot, all things are data. Um, there is no compassion, there is no reading between the lines, it is straight up data. Um, it's going to compare your resume to the job description that it already has on file. It's going to weigh what it finds on your resume against um, the points that the human resources manager has put into the, uh, the settings for that particular job. And then it's going to score, rank, and either forward or fail your resume. And as I said, 75% of the resumes fail. So I'm here to talk to you about how you can make sure that your resume is going to be accurately read and well received by the ATS. And one of the first things that you need to make sure that you do is set up a resume that has very simple formatting. So a lot of people get hung up on creating resumes that look gorgeous on paper. Like you open up your Word document and you're, oh my God, that looks so nice. It's such a nice resume. And the bots are looking at it and going, what the heck is this? I can't make sense out of what, there's a graphic on here and, and there's all of these strange fonts that I can't easily read and there's odd characters. So some of the things I want you to keep in mind, and we're going to look at some samples as we move forward, but these are just, keep this in mind. It's okay to use tables and columns as long as they are very simple. In other words, don't use nested tables. Don't use nested columns. Don't use anything too complex. If you're going to include bullet points, which 
are fine. Use the simple just a dot bullet points. Don't go with diamonds and squares and check marks and everything else. Like I'm using check marks in this slide. Don't do that on your resume. We want things that are going to be easily identifiable for the applicant tracking software. Don't use funky fonts. Stick with the usuals. Use Arial and Times New Roman and Helvec um, Helve Helvetica. I always want to pronounce that wrong and I probably just did, but you know what I mean. And don't include graphics. Graphics are not readable by applicant tracking software. So many people have gotten in the habit now, for example, of putting um, uh, charts and graphs and their own photograph and everything else in their resumes. Completely not necessary if you're applying with a larger company. If you're creating a resume and you're applying for a local job or you're sending it in in an envelope and you know somebody's going to be opening up that resume, terrific. Use the beautiful resume. If you're going to be applying online, use a resume that's actually going to be understandable to the ATS that's first going to be looking at it. Um, we also want them to be able to use, uh, to navigate your resume easily. In other words, having a lot of columns and having sidebars and, and everything else set up can make it difficult for ATS to determine exactly what they're looking at. Um, the other thing is use common headers. Don't be overly creative when you're deciding what to call the different sections of your resume. ATS is equipped to recognize things like experience and skills and education and organizations, things like that. Don't try to be cute and change it to about me or cool stuff I do, or uh, it's just not, it's not something that the ATS is going to be able to assimilate in a meaningful way. Um, and it's going to make it hard for it to get to the actual information or to properly categorize the information that you've included below those funky headers. Keep it simple. Again, if you're applying online, if you're applying on paper, you do you. That's fine. That's fine. But um, you do you works on paper. You do ATS works better when you're applying online. Um, also, use whole words. We've all gotten into the, especially in the texting era, um, and we've just gotten in the habit of abbreviating things and using acronyms. Um, we do a lot of training with the military and talk about an organization that uses acronyms. Everything is an acronym. But for the purposes of catering to an applicant tracking software, make sure that you're minimizing your abbreviations and try to avoid um, acronyms whenever possible. So when we're just giving you a couple of examples here, use return on investment instead of ROI or certified public accountant instead of CPA. Um, once you've said it once, you can, you can then go ahead and use the, the acronym or the abbreviation, but make sure that it's spelled out at least once during the course of, um, putting your resume together. And then the final piece that I want you to keep in mind is format is everything. And that's sort of been mentioned up until now. But again, if it can't be properly parsed, it can't be properly scored. And that's, you know, it's like Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. But um, if it can't be properly parsed, it can't be properly scored. And as we move forward, and I'm talking to you about the different resume formats and the and how you can create one that is easily readable by ATS. Um, this is why you want something that can be properly parsed so that everything that you put, all of the energy, all of the effort that you put into your resume is going to be accurately read and assimilated by the ATS. As with all of our course modules, Module 8 also has a list of links and resources to help you make the most of the information that you'll get in the video. Among those items in this module, you will find sample resume templates. We've done one in a .docx format for those who have updated uh, Microsoft Word. We have a .doc format for those who might have an older version of Microsoft Word, and we also have a .txt file, which I will explain to you um, as we move forward. But for right now, I'd like to take you over to see 
one of the sample resumes. And in keeping with the other modules where we often found ourselves searching for customer service type jobs, we've built this sample resume on that same foundation. So as with most resumes, we start with our contact information, name and contact information. Very simple, and that's where ATS is going to be looking for it, right at the top. For those of you who are accustomed to putting that information into a header, ATS does not parse headers and footers very effectively. So any critical information should be right in the body of the email. So don't create headers and footers if you're planning on sending your resume in electronically. So the next thing you might notice is we do not believe that it's a great idea for people to start their resume with an objective. Even though for many, many years, that was the first thing everybody put on their resume was an objective. In reality, an objective is about what you want to accomplish. Also in reality, employers don't really care. They want to know what you can do for them. That's the bottom line. Once they get to know you, you they'll care about what you want. But before they bring you on, they want to know what you can do for them, not what they can do for you. So in this sample resume, um, we've put together a, a brag tag. We call these brag tags um, as opposed to objectives or overviews. Um, because it's your chance to brag on yourself in three or four lines. What can you tell a prospective employer about you? If they read no further, this is where you can grab them. So in this case, we're saying customer centric, inbound and outbound customer service professional with nine plus year history of exceeding established goals and customer expectations, experienced in cold calling, upselling, technical support and general customer care recognized for excellence in attendance and punctuality, meeting metrics, teamwork, and enthusiastic participation in continuous learning opportunities. So right off the bat, they can see that you're hitting those high points. You have nine years of experience. You've done these types, this type of work. Um, you're punctual and your attendance is good and you're great at meeting metrics as well as continue, continuing education. Now in the next section, we do your skills and expertise. And again, you'll notice that we're using a very recognizable um, title for that section. That's going to be important because it's, the ATS is going to be looking for skills or experience or expertise. So we did skills and expertise. And I want to show you that this is actually in a table, but it's a simple table. I'm going to show you the grid line. Um, during For the process of submitting it, we don't expose those lines, but the lines are there. We use it for just creating a nice grid, but one that's not going to get in the way of parsing for the ATS. And we went ahead and we dropped in soft skills and hard skills that pertain to this type of job. As we go forward, I'm going to talk to you about um, picking out the words that you want to use in your resume. We'll talk about keywords, but I want to talk about the formatting first so that you can keep that in mind um, as we look at other items moving forward through this, this module. So we've hit on some of those high points. These are commonly requested skills and areas of expertise um, when employers are placing a job ad. Then we move on to the professional experience. And you'll notice that we're not using a lot of tabs. We're not putting things all over the place. We want to make sure that information can be um, assimilated as easily as possible by the ATS. So we're putting in the, the job title, the company name, the company city and state, and then the duration or the period in which you were employed. For the purposes of this sample, we also included um, information about, in a nutshell, what did you do for the company? Um, sometimes this will tell you, will tell the, um, the employer uh, what kind of a company it was that you were working for, but usually it's just putting in a nutshell what you did there. And then getting into more specifics um, with those bullet points underneath. You'll notice that whenever possible, we're including information not just about what you did, 
but what you accomplished. This is so, so important when you're trying to set yourself apart from the pack. Employers, when they're reading your resume, don't want to be looking at uh, basically a task list, a to-do list. Uh, um, they don't want to see your job description. They want to know what you did in the job and what you accomplished. So you'll see here, um, you know, we're, we're, we're making notes of things like um, quality scores of over 90%, most sales and 100% attendance, um, successfully placed 30 to 50 calls a day. Um, things like that are really, really important. So, and we've done that with each of the employers here. So 24 consecutive months in the top 20% of best customer satisfaction surveys among an 800 plus agent workforce. Those are really, really important, hard hitting um, data points that you really do need to be hitting on and showcasing those. Nobody wants to um, read a job description. They want to read a resume. What can you do for them? And then we have the education and certifications. This is where you're going to be putting in any diplomas that you've received, um, any programs that you've graduated from. Uh, and in this case, we created an applicant who didn't have a lot of formal education, um, but we made sure that this individual, this this um, fictitious individual, did actually participate in some of Microsoft Office video training courses. And by the way, if your resume seems light on the skills side, if you have skills, if you know how to use Microsoft Word and Excel and, and other parts of the Office suite, that's great. But if you're able to say that you participated, that you took these free online courses from Microsoft, that's even better because then you can actually put it into your education and certifications. Um, and by the way, you can find those. Just, um, just go into Google and put in um, Microsoft Office free training and you'll find it right on the Microsoft website. And I'll make sure that I actually include a link to that in the, uh, the, the module resources as well. So in a nutshell, what we have here is a resume that's going to be easily parsed and easily assimilated by ATS so that it can give a solid rank and a solid score and get you on through, assuming that what it's finding for the actual content, if, you're, um, if your skills and your experience actually meet the criteria of the person who posted the job, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be making on to the next step. So now that you know how to build a resume that ATS can actually parse and read, we need to make sure that what it's finding there is valuable, that it's going to help get you through to that next level where you can actually be seen by a hiring manager. All right. And for that, I want to bring you over to a job that I actually just pulled up a couple of minutes ago because it's current and, um, and actually I'm looking at it for the first time here, I had just pulled it up and, and reserved the tab because I wanted to be able to look at it with a fresh set of eyes. So um, Conduent just posted this job for a remote customer service associate. And what I want you to do is start training yourself to look at a job description and find the keywords that the HR manager chose to use when they created the job description. It's so important for you to remember that the person who wrote the job description is very likely going to be involved in screening, a human screening, of your application when they receive it. And if these are the terms that that person thinks of when they're describing the job, then you need to do your best to mirror what they've put in there. So speak in a language, speak in terms that resonate with the person who wrote the job description. I'll show you what I mean. So if we scroll down in here a little bit, um, we can start to key in on some of the things that they've said. Okay, so active listening, obviously important. Um, answering questions, managing a high volume of incoming calls, navigating through multiple systems, okay? These are things that they put toward the top, okay? So active listening skills, 
managing a high volume of incoming calls, navigating through multiple systems. All right. They're giving you some of the types of questions that you may be answering during the course of those calls. Definitely take a look at those as well. And then there's the what are they looking for? They're looking for somebody who has at least one year of experience and problem solving experience. Okay, there's another good keyword, problem solving. Um, excellent communication skills. Average typing skills must be able to um, type at least 35 minutes, 35 uh, words per minute. Keyboarding and software proficiency. Problem solving, showing up here again. Multitasking, they're looking for a certain level of education. And flexibility, okay? So those are the words that you're going to want to focus on when you are creating your resume. So going back to that resume, take a look at what you have in here and figure out what can I put in here that I didn't already get, okay? So for example, we have service-minded, that's fine, time management, um, communication, problem solving is already in there, dependability. Um, I have data entry in here, we may wanna change that too. Uh, typing and put in your words per minute, let's say 50 words per minute. Okay, now we're addressing that as well. So we have a typing speed in there and chances are the ATS is going to focus in on that WPM and look at that as, okay, yep, this is a, this is something that I'm looking for. So it's really, really important. And I know a lot of people work from a boilerplate resume and they send the same resume out again and again and again. As I mentioned, somebody took the time to write a very specific job description for a very specific job, which has a very specific set of skills that they're looking for. Therefore, you need to have a very specific resume to make sure that you are letting them know that you have the skills that they're looking for. And if that means tweaking what you have in there for your skill set, then do it. If it means tweaking your bullets a little bit, then do it. The other thing that I want you to notice is they're calling this customer service associate. If I were applying for this job, I would go back to my resume and I would put in here customer service associate. Yes, you're a customer service professional, but mirror their language. It means the same thing, but give them back the language that they use. Mirror their language so that they don't have to try to figure out exactly what you meant when you said it. So it's like if you're applying for, if you have on your resume that you're an administrative assistant, um, but they say that they're looking for an executive assistant and you know that you meet that skill set, then use their language, executive assistant. Don't get hung up on the job title. It's what you're doing that's important. Okay, so don't hesitate to make changes there that, that are going to help you out. Um, and again, you can change that here, down here as well, wherever you're using um, other customer service uh, other ways of describing customer service mirror, mirror theirs, okay? Um, now, going back to their job description, yeah, so just pick and choose everything that you might need to and make sure that you're accurately mirroring the language that they use in your resume and in your cover letter as well, okay? Um, and do that for each and every resume that you send out. And what I suggest is, yeah, have a boilerplate. Put together your foundational resume and then save that as your um, as your foundation. Save it as your basic resume and then create a new one and save that one as. So this one I would do, um, save as conduit with today's date, 11 19, 23. And that way I make sure that I also have an accurate reflection of what I sent to each 
company. And that's important. When you get into an interview, it's really important that you remember exactly what you sent to the company. Um, so it doesn't sound like you're trying to BS your way through the interview. You want to make sure that you're looking at what they're looking at. One of the things that we did put together for you for this module and that we've used very, very successfully in the past um, is actually a, um, it's a document that will help you put together your resume. Okay. And for a lot of you, that's going to be meeting, it's going to mean starting fresh. And I encourage everybody to start fresh. If you're beginning a job search now, or if you've been um, butting your head against the wall and you're just not quite sure what's going wrong and why nobody is getting back to you, I suggest that you um, dis disassemble your current resume and start fresh. And let me show you the best way to go about doing that. We actually have created a resume writing and rewriting worksheet that will walk you right through that process. So once you download this resume write and rewrite prep sheet, um, just start from the top and work your way through. We strongly encourage you to just basically dissect your current resume. Don't pull anything word for word and copy and paste because we really want you to um, write with a fresh set of eyes with all of the information that you've received from us in the first eight modules of this course. Um, we want you to look at this through the eyes of an HR manager. We want you to look at this through the eyes of a bot, um, as you may not have been when you wrote your existing resume. So start fresh is usually the best way to make sure that you do end up with a different product rather than just um, an alteration of what you currently have. That said, um, if you don't have the time or the inclination, or if you feel like your resume is just not that far off from being what it should be to be bot friendly, then by all means, just incorporate what we use in this worksheet um, and make those alters, alterations uh, to your existing format. One of the things that we want you to do also is focus on your accomplishments. This can be really, really hard, but we'll show you some of the steps that we use um, to help people work through that process. All right. We want you to come up with a target job title. That's, for example, what I was talking about um, in, in this resume. This is that target job title. Okay. And again, you can move that around. You can change it as you apply for different jobs. Um, and we're telling you if you're creating a, a boilerplate, then keep that customizable. We want you to start figuring out exactly what your skills are. First of all, look at your computer and technical skills, even if they seem like they're just not that much. Um, this is a good place for you to put in your, um, uh, your words per minute. Uh, if you're, if you know your way around Word and Excel or, uh, QuickBooks or any, any other sorts of, um, programs, then this is a good place to drop those. And then language skills. We've given you a section here where you can drop in any information about your language skills. Bilingual and trilingual and multilingual, um, folks are in demand all the time. So you definitely want to strut your stuff if you possess any special language skills. And then there's the soft skills. Those are skills that are really important, um, especially in remote work arrangements. Um, they're your personal attitudes and aptitudes and attributes and um, those things that help you succeed as an individual that oftentimes are hard for people to learn. You either have them or you don't. People can, people can fake them, but if you are, if you already have them, then it's a really great thing to have. So we've given you a list of some core soft skills that a lot of companies look for depending on the job type. And what we want you to do is just go through and either check or underline or circle whatever you want to do to indicate the ones that you have. Those will be the items that you place into that skills and expertise section to supplement um, any of the hard skills that you have, those tech skills and, and um, any of any of the learned skills that you have, they would drop in here. So give that a good look and you may be surprised 
at some of what you are capable of. Um, if you feel like you're really self-effacing and you're not good at figuring out what you're good at, and there are a lot of people out there who would like that, um, depending on what generation you grew up in, a lot of us were taught it's not proper, it's not appropriate to give yourself a pat on the back and brag about yourself. If ever you're going to brag about yourself, your resume and cover letter are the place to do that. So go ahead and capture those details here and ask the people who are closest to you in your life which of those they feel you most embody. Ask coworkers, ask previous employers. Um, sometimes that's the only way we can get an accurate assessment of what we're truly capable of. All right, and then relevant courses, workshops, and seminars. And only include the ones that are relevant to the job that you're applying for. List them all here, but only put the ones that really are relevant to a prospective employer on each resume that you send out, depending on what the job is. If you belong to any professional organizations, possess any licenses or certifications, um, your educational background, all right? And then this is where we want you to start breaking down what you accomplished, not what you did, but what you accomplished. And we've given you sort of a grid here so that you can better figure out how to, um, how to quant uh, quantify that, okay? So did you increase or improve something? Did you decrease or reduce something? And did you develop, launch, implement, or innovate? Um, and we've given you some thought starters there. All right. So you'll definitely want to work your way through that. And then we give you the simple breakdown here um, where you put in the company information. Who did you work for? What's a brief description of the company? And a brief description of what you accomplished sprinkled lightly with what you did. All right. Focus on the accomplishments. That's really going to make a difference. And then, um, and don't worry about trying to match this to any particular job description at this point, because as you go ahead and you put in your resumes and you tailor your resumes for each specific job, that's when you're going to tailor to more closely mirror the actual job description. So yeah, you can download this form, as I said, on the Rat Race Rebellion page where you're going to find right here, resume rewrite and writing um, worksheet. If you are watching this course again on our Rat Race Rebellion site, you're gonna find this right below the video. If you're watching on YouTube, just click down to the description and you'll find a link to the, um, the links and resources there. So I also wanted to point you toward a page that um, we love for people who are visual thinkers. If you take this same job description at Conduent, and I'm actually just going to copy, I'm going to copy the whole job description, and I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to do a Control C, copy that, and I'm going to head over to Word Clouds. And this is kind of a cool tool that um, creates a word cloud out of anything that you put in it. I'm going to go to word list and extract words from text. I'm going to paste it in here and I'm going to click on the apply button that's over here on the right. And based on that same job description that we just looked at, it's going to give me a word cloud. And you can sort of take a look through this and see which words appear in the largest font. The larger the font, the more frequently that word was used in the job description. So for people who are visual thinkers, sometimes reading through a job description and trying to pick out those words can be can be difficult. It can be tedious. So um, we discovered this tool a few years ago. It's called Word Clouds. It's at wordclouds.com. Um, and it's just one more tool that you can put into your toolkit to help you figure out exactly what kind of keywords you might be want you might want to be um, homing in on.
when you're applying for different jobs. If you want to be 100% sure that applicant tracking software is going to be able to fully read your resume, there is one more thing you can do, and that is to create a .txt, a plain text format resume as well, that you use expressly when you're asked to copy and paste your resume into a form field when you're filling out an application. Let me show you how that works. So going back to this sample resume that we've been working with, what I would do is a control A to, cop, um, to select all, control C to copy. And then in my PC, I go down to my search field and I type in notepad, all right? And I open notepad, not wordpad, notepad. The reason that I want to do that is because notepad does not pick up special characters. So it's going to automatically strip out anything that is not easily read by a bot, by technology. Um, it's pl actually a plain text. It's what they call ASCII text, A-S-C-I-I. -I. And then it's going to be ugly. But what you do is you can go in and you can format it in a very simple way so that we have your header is there. We have the first job and I'm going to go ahead and um, actually this is your, your brag tag. And by simply putting some things in bold, you can showcase them more easily. And if you're concerned that somebody's going to see it and you don't like the way that it looks, you can always dress it up in some ways. I'm going to show you a completed version um, of this. And actually, this is a downloadable version that you can find right there in the Module 8 links and resources. So this is exactly what we did. It's a copy and paste of that resume. And you can see that what we've done is we just, we basically turned it into a very, very bot-friendly resume. It got rid of everything that could possibly be a stumbling block for any ATS out there. Um, we stripped out tables, we stripped out unnecessary tabs or spacing, and just put everything in a very easy to digest, very easy to parse format. And if you can remember, the last thing we said is if you can't if it can't be properly parsed, it can't be properly scored, right? So that's what we're looking for. We want that thing that's going to be very easily parsed. And that's exactly what this .txt will do. And then after you've finished creating it, you're just going to do a control S or file save and then save it by whatever name you want to save it as. And save that along with your, your regular document as a .txt file. It will automatically save that way. Um, and that way you have this sure thing. All right. Um, and we definitely recommend that people do get in the habit of creating a .txt format um, of everything that they put together. So that's it. You now have an arsenal full of information that you need to put together your resume. Um, download that resume writing and rewriting worksheet and get to work putting together uh, a good overview of what you know and what you've accomplished. Uh, and then start putting it together as a foundational resume, the one on which you will build your very specific resumes for each and every employer. Um, the next module is going to be very brief. It deals with cover letters, the importance of cover letters, uh, what to include in them, and how they can really help to boost your application to the next level. They're also reviewed by ATS, but they're much more free form and it gives you a great chance to really showcase yourself. So we will see you in module nine. Have fun starting to put your resume together. And I sort of say that tongue in cheek because there are very few people who actually like writing resumes, um, but at least this way you're feeling better equipped to get out there and do a great job of it. We'll see you in the next module. Have a great day.